Stay tuned to the end of the episode for a list of resources for the trans community, including some legal resources and recommended books. If you're listening to this podcast on one of our audio channels, head to either our Patterson Park Podcast Facebook group page or useventphotos.com slash podcast, and we'll list the resources there. Thanks. Enjoy the podcast. How you doing? I'm Mike Gaddy and welcome to the Patterson Park Podcast. Today, today I'm a little sad because today we finish up our three-part series on being trans, growing up trans in America. We sit back down, I sit back down with Miles Imler who I grew up with in high school and we cover a lot of ground. We cover everything from the spike in violence in Louisiana and Texas that's currently happening to what to do if your child comes to you and expresses that they're transgender. They're not going to say, Mom, Dad, I'm transgender, but that's what they're going to try to express. What to do if that happens. What to do if your friend comes to you and comes out as a transgender person. If you're transgender, how do you have that conversation with your life partner? How do you have that conversation at work? Those are just a few of the topics we discuss, and frankly, I've never heard them discussed anywhere in LGBTQIA media or in mainstream media. I cannot believe Miles sat down with me and talked about some of these most personal issues that you could ever, ever come across. Finally, we talk about dating as a transgender person and how hard that is for the transgender community. Maybe some few tips are thrown in there. So please join me. This is the final installment in this series. And Miles wraps it up by saying, we will win. In the end, we just have to weather the storm. Miles has weathered a personal storm, a hurricane of proportions that I cannot imagine. And he's come out with his humor and his sense of self stronger than ever. Please join me. Take a listen. My overriding question is, without getting into the weeds of things, Is violence against the transgender community generally getting worse or generally getting better? We're just hearing about it more in your kind of gut visceral reaction. Okay, from what I've been reading, I really believe that there is an increase of violent attacks against transgender people. Um, The Human Rights Campaign have been tracking these attacks since 2013, and they're seeing a pattern of year by year increases. Um, and this year alone, uh, these cases have risen at least 300%. So far this year, approximately 29 such killings have taken place, with the majority of the victims being trans women of color. Um, Advocates fear more lives will be lost. In 2020, at least 44 transgender people were fatally shot or killed by other violent means, the largest number uh, since the human rights campaign began tracking these. So uh, there is really yeah. strong evidence to suggest that things are actually getting worse, not better uh, in terms of violence against the trans community. Yes, yes. And uh, the, the details about these women and their deaths are often limited. Uh, the Washington Post identified 140 transgender women who were killed nationwide between 2015 and 2020, and more than 75% of those killed were Black transgender women, with Louisiana having the highest number of killings per capita of any state of transgender women. 
Available research shows that at least half of the perpetrators are intimate partners of some kind. Uh, police and prosecutors rarely categorize these homicides as hate crimes motiva motivated by a victim's gender ide identity. And in the past six years, prosecutors have pursued hate crimes in only three cases, in part because many states, including Louisiana, lack hate crime laws based on gender identity. Tracy Williams, who I talked about in the prequel to this series, uh, transgender woman who was killed again in Houston, uh, one of two within the space of a month of each other, and was dumped on the side of the road, was killed by her boyfriend because her boyfriend didn't want her to break up. With her. So it, it's very common, I guess, I, I didn't really realize this, that a lot of these uh, the, the transgender women in particular find themselves in relationships that lead to violence. Yes. It's, it's also ingrained in our culture um, across the map. And I'd hate to say this, but a lot of the violence, I think, is somehow related to the rise in hate groups and hate rhetoric speak against minority groups that point back to the Trump rallies in 2015, where CNN he made just, that kind of talk acceptable and brought it out into the open. When somebody comes out as trans um, to, let's say, let's say it's your uh, son or daughter coming out as a trans person, what are the first steps in your view parents should take to help move forward right now. I, I just posted, I'm sure you saw on the Patterson Park podcast Facebook page where one parent reacted by having a, and there was controversy around this, but whatever, a uh, um, gender reveal party. What are some things that resources and, and just things that parents can do if their kid comes out as being a trans individual? Okay, well, first, uh, they should listen to how their child identifies. Um, their child might say something like, I know I'm a boy, even if they were assigned female at birth. Uh, look for consistency. It's typical for young kids to go through phases of pretending to be another gender. Some children do go through a lengthy phase of identifying with a different gender when they were young. Uh, that phase will typically end at around the age of nine or 10 years old. But a child who, routine, who routinely insists upon their gender is likely to be transgender. And transitioning can help the child's social development, focus in school and emotional well-being, and may reduce behavior problems. A parent should maybe do a trial run if the child is, is interested. Uh, this can be useful for the child to um, give them freedom to really explore their gender identity. If their child thinks they are transgender, they should set aside a couple of days and allow that child to become their chosen gender for a while. This might mean, for example, calling, calling them Jennifer, if that's a name they like, and support their decision to wear a dress. Allow their child to lead in this experiment. Uh, don't pressure them to try things that they don't want to try, such as being called by a different name. And watch the child during the trial run. Do they seem happier or more confident? Are they having more fun? This can help them determine whether uh, this is a path that they need to continue and uh, would be good for their overall morale and development. Um, it would be good to seek a therapist or a counselor Look for a licensed professional who has experience in working with transgender children. Uh, stand up for your child. Uh, their child is likely to be bullied if they are uh, taking on another identity outside of their gender. And uh, if they hear anti-trans comments, they should stand up and say things like, please don't say that again. Comments like that are not welcome. Uh, they could uh, join uh, local support community groups and um, be on the lookout for signs of depression or anxiety. Transgender kids might feel a lot of pressure and can endure bullying, discrimination, 
a lack of acceptance from the community or other family members, and this can take a toll on them. All gender nonconforming children are at a higher risk for mental health issues. If they notice signs of a problem, uh, they should take the child to a mental health professional. Uh, be on the lookout for excessive sleeping, sudden weight loss or weight gain, lack of interest in activities they previously enjoyed, noticeable mood shifts, and explore medical options if the child is transgender and is expressing interest in continuing on this path. Uh, talk to your child's doctor about these age-appropriate gender-affirming treatment options that are available. And most likely it would be puberty blockers, uh, which acts like a pause button in slowing puberty development, allowing that child to, to decide if they want to continue on this path forward and take hormones at an older age. There are, I didn't know there were, I guess I should have known this, but there's actually drugs that block puberty, uh, which what you said puberty was one of the hardest times for you growing up because you felt like your body was betraying you. Absolutely. It was, uh, it was nightmarish. Um, I did not want to accept what was happening. It was a losing battle. And um, as development continued, those feelings just grew worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, so if, so there's actually a lot that's available to parents now that there weren't 10, 50, when you were growing up or, right. or when I was growing up. Um, what about if a friend comes to you and says that they're trans and going to start going through a tr the transition, how, as a friend, can you act to support that, that person in the journey that they're going through? Uh, for a friend, I mm -hmm. would tell them uh, about the being supportive. I would probably give them lists of resources where they could join, um, like GLAD, and um, just... Yeah, it pretty much a lot of this is parallel would apply to them too. But uh, so yeah. moving on to the personal, and this is where I think you got lucky. Moving on to the personal, a lot of trans then also have to come out to their partner that they're with at the time, uh, you know, their romantic uh, uh, partner. Uh, in your case, you were married to your husband and came out to him as being a trans. Now, I I don't, yeah. you, you had a, a fairly liberal, you know, out, outgoing relationship from the beginning. So this was not a, a uh, traditional, you know, uh, type of, of thing. You, you, yeah. you were pretty open and frank uh, in terms of your previous relationship. So he kind of knew he was getting a <laughs> Yes. Handful. And I mean that with all the love of the world. Uh, yeah. Much like when I <laughs> hooked up with Matthew, he knew he knew what he was in for. What would you tell a trans person who is looking to come out to their partner? What advice would you give them just from the from the heart? OK, well, assuming that this trans person is not yet transitioned and they are already with their partner. Um, I would get them to uh, tell their partner as soon as possible. The longer they wait it, the harder it will be. And their partner may suspect, well, what else have you been hiding from me if right. they try to hide it? So you right. really can't avoid that. Um, so it's kind of like, like it's kind of like coming out. You know, everybody always wants to wait and think it's going to get easier and done. Yeah. And that was one thing that I did right, was telling my husband. Uh, this was after I had just started uh, my therapy sessions. And um, right after I received the diagnosis of, at the time, gender identity disorder and uh, telling him, uh, he didn't want to believe it. He went through a lot of denial. He thought I was imagining it or it was just a phase. Um, but once he came around, and uh, started sorting through his feelings. 
um, he remembered that we had a long history together. We had chemistry. We had a lot of the shared uh, same interests and beliefs. He didn't want to lose that and he didn't want to lose me. And with counseling, we, uh, we came okay. together. And how long now have you been married? Uh, we've been married for 22 and a half years. And at the time that I came out to him, we were married about 16 and a half years. So yeah, he's definitely remember, saying. <laughs> honey, remember what you said for better or worse? <laughs> Yeah. Why is that what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was it was it was a very difficult time. I broke into tears when I was trying to tell him. And um yeah, it, we had we had some distance for a while. And then things were, you know, were getting chaotic everywhere else in my life with family, with friends who were discovering with work. And uh, the problems I was having there in the workplace, incidentally, is the toughest part of anyone's transition. And the first year is the most difficult because of that. It's just a lot of turbulence. So I, I actually find that surprising that the workplace and by way of review, you work in and I don't want to say what what company or even what business because it's a fairly small um community but you right. work in a business that was founded by a trans person and it was still difficult for you even with that as the history of the company which most his companies just by definition aren't founded by trans people i mean you know right and, and you still that was the one of the hardest parts of your transitioning was work yeah well in in my department um i'm working around people who are around my age and many of them conservative and many of them having conservative views. And so, you know, it was of no surprise. Um, transphobia, which is the fear and discomfort of trans people, exists everywhere, including the workplace. So, you know, yeah. you, you just can't control it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are some let, let's say that that somebody is not in a current relationship and is uh, um, realizing that they are uh, trans and that they are going to uh, go through the transition and have the gender uh, affirmation surgery and they're they've decided okay this is something I lived with this long enough this is something I have to do what are some of the challenges in dating and some of the resources, you know, because it seems to me it's a hard conversation to have. I mean, do you go, uh, let's say you're a trans male, do you go on Grinder, you know, or Scruff and say, okay, yeah. well, I'm trans male? I mean, right. you know, or are there social networks specifically for trans people for dating? I, I honestly, I don't know these things. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about dating and relationships for trans people, first I want to point out an alarming and sad reality here. And that is virtually, according to a study that was published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, they found that virtually all heterosexuals excluded trans folks from their dating pool. Only 1.8% of straight women and 3.3% of straight men chose a trans person of either binary gender, but most non-heterosexuals weren't down for dating a trans person either, with only 11.5% of gay men and 29% of lesbians being trans inclusive in their dating preferences. The high rates of trans exclusion from potential dating pools are undoubtedly due in part to cis normative views, cis sexism, and transphobia. And for review, for those in the audience who don't remember or know of the meaning of cisgender, uh, it's basically non-transgender. They are the people whose sex assigned at birth matches their gender identity. Okay, so those are the things that trans people have, have to deal with. Um, Today. It makes it hard. 
yes. in 2021, I, I, th- those percentages were so low, they went flying past me. But basically, yeah. Yeah. The, da- the, the dating pool of even in the gay community of people who exclude trans in the people that they want to even see profiles of right. is really small. So it's, it's, it, it is. It's a, so it is a difficult. So let's say, okay, I'm not going to go on and list myself as a trans person, have that discussion later. Some, you know, uh, some people do that. And that's kind of controversial, too. And it also brings up the question, well, when do you tell your partner you're trans and how do you handle them when they get really upset? And it, you know, what else are you hiding from me? All kinds of suspicions. So do you tell your partner up front or later on? Now, if I were in a single situation and joining uh, a dating a uh, company such as OKCupid, okay which allows trans, you know, it does, it, it is open to trans people. I As would say option. it up front, right. okay. but some people don't because of that prejudice. Right, right, right. Right. But it is important to lay out that there is a fear that some people have this notion that dating a trans person would be a challenge to their sexual orientation making someone less straight, gay, or lesbian. And that mentality is wrong, as trans women are real women. Trans men are real men. We are who we say we are. And that's something that is hard to overcome. But um, there are outlets for trans people with social media sites like Facebook and groups and they can find friends online. It's a little better than what it was, but it's still pretty bad. And so I can't place blame on someone for not being upfront on the first date that they're trans. So, I mean, you know, take it with what you will, you know, there's, there's reasons for everything, so. Yeah. I mean, my heart goes out to those who have not been able to find uh, a partner. And unfortunately, I know a lot of a lot of trans people who are like that and who ended up with broken marriages, abandoned by family, relatives. It's still pretty high in that in that area, too. There are there has been a lot of progress made politically with some trans people being elected for the first time for national office. How do you see that as voting for the trans community, you know, five years from now? In other words, I guess what how do you read the tea leaves as to where we're going moving forward? Okay, well, um, increased exposure. Um Trans people are making history on magazine covers, in politics. State Senator Sarah McBride of Delaware, Assistant Secretary of Health Rachel Levine, the writer and director Janet Mock, and the actor Elliot Page. A Black Trans Lives Matter in March in New York City in June 2020 drew 15,000 people and a GLAD analysis of the 2020 and 2021 television series found 29 regular or recurring trans characters on scripted primetime broadcast shows, scripted. cable and streaming shows for the first time. Scripted, not so not RuPaul's Drag Race. We're talking about scripted, scripted TV series. TV shows series. So we're seeing ourselves reflected in the broader culture and we're seeing more role models and we're learning how to navigate the crushing weight of transphobia with all this exposure and increased awareness. But on the other hand, language does not equal legislation and to fight all these anti-trans legislations that we've been seeing last year and this year with, I will mention, 115 bills that were introduced by GOP legislations 
13 of which have been written into law with the majority of those bills being around sports bans of trans youth, followed by healthcare bans for trans youth. The most egregious of the sports bans was that they could involve intrusive questioning, testing, and possibly a genital search. Imagine the trauma that would bring to a young child who might not necessarily even be transgender, but look and act a certain way, might be gender queer to be thrown into that. Doctors being supportive of, of uh, helping a trans child, child transition could face criminal charges. But this is what we're up against right now. I had to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> There, there, is a, there is a silver lining, something to take away from all this. Now, we are under the umbrella of the Biden administration, who is the most pro-LGBTQ administration we have ever had, undoing the damages, still fighting to undo the damages of the Trump administration and bringing more and more rights for the community as a whole. But we could also lose that in the midterms and in 2024. But the bright side that I am seeing is the overwhelming support of major corporations and sports organizations pulling out from states with anti-trans and LGBTQ legislation, losing money with lawsuits, we saw that in 2016 in North Carolina's HB2 bathroom bill when it was passed, that state lost billions of dollars and were forced, forced to uh, remove the bill. And so we could see that again. And I think money talks and that's going to drive away these, these anti-trans and LGBTQ efforts. So I think we will win in the end. We just have to weather the storm. This, this was a passion project with Miles, exploring transgender and what it means to be transgender, growing up transgender, uh, and all of the current issues surrounding being transgender has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. I will always appreciate Miles for sitting down with me and telling me his story. I understand so much more about what the transgender community goes through. It's just, it's just astounding. I have had people come up to me and ask me more for more information. If you are transgender or you're dealing with these issues within your family and you want to reach out to Miles, please feel free to do so on Facebook Messenger or reach out to me and I'll put you in touch. Next week, next week we are going to return to the normal Patterson Park podcast episodes exploring the entrepreneurs, activists, and artists here in Baltimore. So please join me. Meanwhile, have a great few weeks and we'll talk to you soon.